If you think Disney always has the Universal theme parks beat, you are dead wrong. And I'm gonna show you why. That's right, kids. Today we are at Universal Orlando Resort to talk about 15 things you got wrong when it comes to these parks by looking into the most underrated, underappreciated, and probably best parts of these parks. And we're starting strong by heading right into Universal Studios Florida. Because friends, there's something pretty big you're getting wrong about Universal Orlando. You're wrong if you say the quick service food isn't as good. Now overall, Universal's quick service food probably doesn't have the same overall draw as Disney's quick service food yet. But that's because they're currently upping their game. They have some spots that I would say are just as good, if not better, than a lot of iconic and favorite Disney quick service spots. So, we stopped by one of my favorites, Illuminations Minions Cafe, to show you exactly what I mean. Now, I've eaten every single thing on the menu here, literally, by myself. You can see that on the channel right now. The amount of Tupperware I had was horrific. But we're gonna head inside and have a quick bite to eat, talk about some other amazing spots you don't wanna miss out on. Welcome to Minion Cafe, my office. I love it here. This restaurant has rooms themed to the Minions. It's huge, there's tons of seating, there's so much air conditioning, and the food pretty much rocks. There's a couple of favorites I have, but all the food's pretty good. My number one misconception of Universal was that I used to think that the snacks around this park just weren't as good, and it's just not true. Not only as there amazing food here at Illuminations Cafe, you can also find great food at the Crepe Stand in Central Park here in Universal Studios. We love all of that Harry Potter food, which you can see us eat around Harry Potter World to see it all. Um, Emma's a huge fan of Doc Suger's Desert Kebab in the Lost Continent in Islands of Adventure. Um, and I've had great food in tons of the quick services around the park. So those are some recommendations, but if you want to learn more about great universal food, you can check out our Eating Everything in Harry Potter World video, as well as our Eating All the Best Non-Harry Potter Food in Universal. We've done both, so check out those. You're going to look this glazed salmon with coconut blue rice and Thai cucumber and edamame in the eyes and tell me that I'm wrong, especially when it comes with this, you're not gonna. This is amazing. I'm like a scientist. Another misconception is that the rides are lackluster, and to that I say, think again. There are some rides at the Universal Parks that just aren't great. Talking the Fast and Furious ride, the Jimmy Fallon ride, which I hate. A lot of folks don't love Skull Island, Reign of Kong. And it makes it so a lot of people say, well, all the rides are simulators, all the rides are screens. And Universal does rely pretty heavily on screens. However, it's really not their whole shtick, and a lot of the rides are absolutely spectacular. Rides like Velocicoaster, Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure, and Escape from Gringotts are major rides. Better than many, many rides in Disney World. And it's often a point of conversation of which is the better ride in Orlando, Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure, or Rise of the Resistance. It's that good. Universal rides offer awesome tech, great storylines, and way more thrills than Disney. And I'll tell you, nothing at Disney, even Tron, compares to the thrills you'll find on Velocicoaster. We're over near DreamWorks Land now, which opens this summer. Look at Shrek Swamp! You can see the troller coaster back there as well, but I'm pretty just jazzed about Shrek Swamp. I can't wait! That's where the new Shrek meet and greet is gonna be. That really brings us to our next point. Now I know what you're thinking. Universal just doesn't have any characters that I know and love. That's wrong. You're wrong. You're so wrong. Shrek is here and that's all that matters. Okay, maybe it's not all that matters, but Universal has a lot of characters you can meet um, and a lot of them you will recognize. You can meet Shrek. When DreamWorks Land opens, you'll be able to meet Donkey. I met Fiona and Puss in Boots and Kitty Softpaws. If your kiddos love Gabby, she is here too. Too. Uh, the trolls are often out meeting. You can meet the Scooby Doo gang. Uh, Beetlejuice is often out and around. Betty Boop. And there are a couple of meet and greet experiences at Universal that actually inspired this entire video because of how cool they are. And honestly, Disney just doesn't have anything like them. One of those is the Transformers meet and greet where you can meet Megatron, Optimus Prime, or Bumblebee. This meet and greet is so amazing because the Transformers are huge and they'll actually talk to you. And Megatron is so scary. Um, this literally goes viral all the time because of how cool this meet and greet is. The line is usually really long, so if you are interested in the Transformers meet and greet, you might wanna hop in line before the Transformers are out. 
or just be ready to wait a little bit of a long time. The other stunning meet and greet that you can find at Universal Orlando is the Raptor meet and greet. This takes place over at Islands of Adventure in the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World section. You can do an encounter with a raptor. I know you're thinking like, oh, you know, it's not gonna scare me. Every single time I laugh at the people in front of me and then I get scared when I get up to see the raptor. Sometimes they meet with a baby raptor. There just aren't meet and greet experiences like that at Disney and I just think they are so, so cool. Grogu is the most similar to like the baby raptor experience. They don't really have anything in Disney World like the Transformers or the Raptors. Another misconception is that there are no good table service restaurants at Universal. Another wrong one. Universal has some awesome table service spots. My personal favorite is Confisco Grill, which is a delicious restaurant near the front of the park that has amazing short ribs and amazing banh mi. A really popular one here is Mythos. Mythos is a super affordable, very tasty, and heavily themed restaurant. Makes it look like you're eating inside of like an old mythological temple. It's very cool. A lot of the dining is award winning and there are some amazing spots to eat all around Universal. You can see us visit a couple of those spots, including Mythos, during my perfect day here with Disney Food Blog, where I took DFE Cassie along with AJ and DFE Bria around to uh, experience Universal for the day. Now a lot of folks say that there's just not as much to do in the Universal parks. And to that we say fibs, lies, misdirection. Sure, Universal is a smaller vacation destination right now until Epic Universe, their new park, opens next year in 2025. However, there's a lot more to do in the Universal parks than people think. It's not just the rides, it's not just the shows, and there are a lot of fun rides and shows, but there's so much more too. You can do magic with interactive Wizarding World of Harry Potter wands in both theme parks. There's this amazing Camp Jurassic section, which is a super fun play area for all ages, where you can climb on nets. Sage, Emma, and Fry did this during Sage's Perfect Day, and it looked like a blast. In Jurassic World, you can even see the dinosaurs hatch if you're in the Discovery Center around the time that that's happening. There's a lot of cool stuff to do in the parks that you might not even know about. And if you wanna make sure you don't miss a single thing, you can check out our complete tours of Universal Studios and Universal's Islands of Adventure. We've got one for Volcano Bay too, and those will show you all of the cool stuff you can do around the parks. I'm also working my way through staying at every Universal hotel, so you can see all of the unique things that are offered at those resorts as well. Your next misconception, you need to pay to skip the lines at Universal like you do at Disney. Well, it's a complicated one, but we'll talk about it. For one, it's a whole lot easier to get on Universal rides than it is to get on Disney rides. If you go to Universal on a weekday, you will probably be met with very, very short lines most of the year. I always recommend going to Universal on a weekday because on those weekends, it's going to get a little busier. For instance, look at this. This is the most popular ride in this park, Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts, and it is a 15 minute wait right now. Not too shabby. Now at Disney, you're never going to see the most popular rides in the park drop to something that low. So you just don't need to pay to skip the lines, but there are options to, and you may want to consider it if you're here during a busier time of the year or on a weekend. Now at Disney, your skip the line service is gonna be Genie Plus, starting at $15 a person, sometimes as high as $39 per person, and lets you book lightning lanes one at a time throughout your day. It keeps you on your phone a lot, it's really complicated, uh, but it's not overly expensive. Now, here at Universal, they offer the Express Pass, which is a little bit different. They have a couple of different levels of Express Pass, and the prices for it do vary based on date. It starts around $80 per person per day, but the catch is, Express is a whole lot less complicated than Genie. You don't really have to worry about it. You walk up to a line, you scan your Express Pass, you skip that line. And almost every attraction is included in it, except for some of the very best. So if you do have only one day in Universal or it's really busy, you can stack an Express Pass and not have to think about anything and just find yourself skipping the lines. Some levels of Express Pass let you skip each Express line once. Some let you skip as many times as you want. You could ride Gringotts over and over and over again for all they care. But perhaps the most interesting part of Express Pass is that if you stay at a Universal Premier Level Hotel, that is their highest, most expensive level of hotel, gonna be starting around $300 per night you get Express Pass for free with your stay. Express Pass will be included. It is the unlimited Express Pass, and it lets you head to the parks and ride whatever you want, whenever you want, skipping that line, except for the few things that aren't included. Small print. So, the reason you don't have to pay to skip the lines like you do at Disney is either A, because you don't need to because the lines are so short, or B, 
You don't need to because you have Express Pass included with your hotel. Pretty darn snazzy. People also tend to say that Universal is a one day trip and not a vacation destination. Hogwash. Universal can be done in one day if you've got a very few priorities and a plan and maybe buy Express and a two park ticket, shell out some cash to make it happen. You can probably do Universal in one day. We are of the opinion that you need at least two, if not three days in Universal, especially if there's a seasonal event going on, and especially if you want to go to Volcano Bay to experience everything this resort has to offer. It is absolutely so much fun. We are not really water park people at all years, and we all love Volcano Bay, every single one of us. It is so much fun. It's like going to a tropical beach, but with thrilling rides. It's so much fun. In 2025, Universal is opening Epic Universe. This is going to be a massive third park getting added to Universal Resort. It is going to have five new lands, including a galaxy themed tub, dark universe, a Universal Monsters themed land, a third Wizarding World of Harry Potter centered around Wizarding Paris, uh, a How to Train Your Dragon land, and a Super Nintendo World like they have in California and Japan. It is going to be so, so, so spectacular. They've already given us some details. We are keeping a very close eye on it and announcing as soon as we know anything over on the All Ears Instagram. If you want to learn more about what to expect at Epic Universe, I did make a predictions video that's on the channel now and everything that I've predicted so far has been right. That new part of the resort is also gonna bring three hotels, obviously a ton of dining, tons of new shopping, so there's just gonna be so much to do. The goal, Universal has said, is to turn Universal Resort into a week-long destination. And I think they're gonna do it. But even as is, one day is only enough if you're willing to go, 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 and maybe miss out on some of your priorities. The next thing you're wrong about is that you need a big bag like you would at Disney. Maybe you do if you're towing around a bunch of kiddos, but maybe you don't. I'm gonna toss to my friend Emma for this one because she does a little bit better of a job than I do at bringing a smaller bag to Universal. Emma, over to you. All right, I'm not in Universal today, but if I was, I would be bringing this instead of a normal lounge fly or a bigger backpack. Now, Quincy kind of talked about this, but I'm not a parent, so that means I can pack light. And it's one of the best things about going to Universal is that I feel like you can pack lighter. So typically, I just bring a fanny pack. I actually really love this one off of Amazon. There's a component in the back if you need it, and there's two holders in the middle. Now, these are the same base essentials that I have for Disney, but at Disney, I like to pack a little bit more. At Universal, you're gonna find me with a wallet and keys. This is where you're gonna find my passes and my cards. I'm gonna buy all of my food at Universal. I also like to bring a charging cord with me just in case. Universal is similar, you're gonna use your phone a lot. So I like to always have my charging cord and of course my favorite portable charger that actually has solar powered charging so you can recharge this if you need it. Chapstick, hair bow, and a fuel rod. They do have fuel rods over there at Universal as well. This is another form of a portable charger. And if you don't have one with you and your phone is dying, you can actually buy this. Um, and it has charging cords inside it. Now at Disney, you can exchange this for free and get a fresh fuel rod if it's dying. Now you have a small fee at Universal, but I still keep it just in case. And that's really it. There's two incentives really to bringing a smaller bag to Universal. One, Universal does use lockers for certain ride systems and you cannot take your bags with you. And so you're gonna have to stick them in the locker. And I know from sadly bad experiences that lounge flies typically do not fit in the locker because they are smaller. And anything that's bigger than that small lounge fly, which the lounge why isn't that big. Anything that's bigger than that typically is not gonna fit in that locker and you're gonna have to pay for one. Another incentive to bringing a fanny pack or a waist sling is if you can get it around your waist, a lot of rides will let you onto the ride without having to put this bag in the locker. So it's just, there's more incentive to bring a smaller bag. I prefer these and it's just easier. We're talking about a common misconception, which is that I can take my bags on a ride. No, you can't. A lot of Universal rides do not allow carry-on bags, similar to Tron Light Cycle running Magic Kingdom now. But don't you worry, you're not gonna be paying for a locker, it's not the end of the world. They offer complimentary lockers. So here at Men and Black Alien Attack, you can find those complimentary lockers off to the side. They're always gonna be right by any attraction that you can't keep your bags on. The lockers are complimentary, and you access them just by scanning your park tickets. So you can access as many lockers as you have park tickets, toss your bag, leave it behind, and then head on in and ride the ride. When you come out, you grab your bag and it's easy peasy. Sure, it's an extra step, but it's one that if you're prepared for it, it's not too difficult to handle. But this is why Emma's fanny pack tip is absolutely fantastic because if you are wearing a bag that goes around your waist, most cases you will not have to leave it in a locker. 
There are a couple of rides that are so intense that you do have to leave everything in a locker, your phone included. You will literally go through metal detectors, including the Hulk coaster over an island's adventure and Velocicoaster, same place. Lockers are always complimentary. It's an easy extra step. It's never bugged me very much. All right, another one. But the water rides just aren't as good. And I'll tell you, hands down, Universal has Disney beat on water rides. Listen, Emma made this shot list as a known water ride hater. And she meant this. The water rides here kind of rock. The two major water rides are located in Toon Lagoon, and it's Dudley Do Rides Rip Soft Falls and Popeye and Bluto's Build Rat Barges. This is Dudley Do Rides Rip Soft Falls right here. This one is so, so thrilling. That drop is higher than Splash Mountains, and you get absolutely and totally soaked. Papa and Bluto's Build Drop Barges is my favorite raft ride that I've ever been on anywhere. And Cali River Rapids and Disney World, their raft ride is probably my least favorite ride I've ever been on anywhere. Just because that one has little to no story, kind of shoddy theming, and is not even a fun raft ride. There's only one big drop. So you kind of get wet for nothing. On top of that, there are water rides at this park that Emma will ride, specifically Jurassic Park River Adventure, which has kind of a big splashdown at the end. Um, and you can get very, very wet and Emma will still ride it because she enjoys it so much. So Universal just does water rides right. On top of that, if you add Volcano Bay, their slides, their aqua coaster, Volcano Bay is hands down a better water park than either of the water parks at Disney, or honestly both of them combined. Um, it might be the best water park in the world, so kind of unfair to compare to it, but water rides are done well at this park. One tip is to wear sandals or waterproof shoes. I wear pretty much most days uh, Chacos, which are my absolute favorite waterproof shoe. So you can find links to them on All Your Style at, under the Quincy Essentials highlight on Instagram. Um, these are I mean, literally the must for me. They're orthopedic, they're waterproof, and they dry extremely quickly. And it pours almost every day in the summer. So absolutely a must do. Great for water rides too. And I might even suggest bringing up a change of clothes or at least a change of shorts. Because chafing, not fun. Now if you're walking around Universal, you might think, well, it's not as immersive. And again, wrong. Sorry about it. Really tough day. This is exactly what people are talking about when they say Universal isn't an, as immersive. You've got Men in Black and Simpsons. I can see Transformers and San Francisco and the Wizarding World of Harry Potter's London all at once. Yeah, I get what you're saying. It does take you a little bit out of it. But the intent of Universal Orlando is similar to what the original intent of Hollywood Studios or MGM Studios was. And that was to be a working movie studio theme which means of course you're able to see the other themed areas. Those are other themes in the movie studio. Now, they've branched off a little bit from this, just like Disney has. Now at Disney, you can find yourself completely sequestered off in Toy Story Land or in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge where it feels like you're on another world and that's been more their focus. Universal got into the same thing. Sure, in Wizarding World London, you might be able to see Simpsons Land, but you're gonna tell me this is an immersive? The books and the windows are growling at me. I can hear the headlines from the Daily Prophet coming through this store. I can go in so many of these shops and find myself exploring the wizarding shops that I've seen in the movies and read about in the books. Universal goes hard with their immersion, which is why I absolutely can't wait for Epic Universe. <laughs> in recent years, just like Disney, Universal has upped their focus on immersion. You can see that mostly in the Wizarding World, with things like the wand ceremony being incredibly immersive. Even shopping for a Pygmy Puff, you get to do a whole naming ceremony and everything. The whole experience is very immersive. Over in that Jurassic Park land, which was around before that focus on immersion was really a thing, they've made huge strides on increasing the immersion over there. You got those raptor encounter character experiences, and you got the immersive story of the Velocicoaster that treats you as if you are a guest exploring Jurassic World. I'm like engrossed in people talking to a talking head right now. He's talking about what ice cream flavor they're eating and they don't know. Anyway, you can talk to a talking head. Immersive. And also another insanely cool meet and greet. Well, what's that? You said that single rider lines don't work very well at theme parks and are also slow. I think you might be thinking of Disney, my friend. At Disney, there are very few attractions that have single rider lines. And some of them are notorious for making you wait as long, if not longer, as the regular line. A great example of this is going to be Rock and Roller Coaster. Millennium Falcon and Test Track tend to work pretty well, but there just aren't that many single rider lines, and some of them can be dangerous. Whereas here in Universal, there are a lot more attractions with single rider line. In Universal Studios, you can find single rider at Fast and Furious, Supercharged, Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts, Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, Men in Black Alien Attack, Revenge of the Mummy, and Transformers the Ride 3D. 
At Islands of Adventure, you can find it at The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man, Doctor Doom's Fearfall, Dudley Do-Right's Ripsaw Falls, Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure, Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, The Incredible Hulk Coaster, Jurassic Park River Adventure, Jurassic World Velocicoaster, and Skull Island Reign of Kong. So, so many more options. And with all of these options, I've tried every single one, and I have found that they get you on these rides a whole lot quicker than the standard line every single time. In fact, on most days, outside of the busiest days of the whole year, you'll be on the attraction in 10 minutes or less. So if you are willing and able to split up your party, remember you will not be riding with the people you get in line with, go ahead and use that single rider line. Oh my gosh, are we in Hollywood? Wow. You're wrong if you think the shows aren't as good here. Disney has some pretty good shows, I'll give it to them. But Universal has shows that are just as good, and in some cases, I might say better. I'm standing outside what is considered one of the best attractions at Universal Orlando, and that is the Born Spectacular. There are so, so, so many amazing shows at Universal Orlando, from the Born Spectacular to the horror makeup show, to even the Streamosphere shows, my favorite being Vamos. I also love the Beat Builders. The shows are awesome. And something they have on Disney is that they're kind of drive-by shows. Instead of having to plan for the show and get there 30 minutes in advance, on most days for Universal shows, you can just swing in right before it starts. You might not get the best seat for some of the more popular ones. You can swing in, see an amazing, amazing show, and then keep moving. Whereas at Disney, you might find yourself sitting in the theater 30 minutes ahead of start to get a seat at all or to get a good seat. My absolute favorite sit-down show is for sure The Born Spectacular, but I love every single Universal show. They're all amazing, and if you are walking down the street and you see some entertainment happening, you better stop. But Disney has the better seasonal events. Wrong. Maybe they do, depending on you and your family, but maybe they don't. I, for instance, hands down, would rather go to a Universal seasonal event than Disney every single time. My favorite Universal seasonal event of the whole year is Halloween Horror Nights, which is their very, very scary haunted experience where there are haunted houses and scare zones. Uh, you can see me and Emma, sweet, brave Emma, taking this on last year. Um, they've just released the merch for this year's. I am so excited. Halloween Horror Nights is literally my favorite time of the whole year now that I live in Orlando. Um, I get the season pass every single year, and every single year I have so much fun. I go as many times as I possibly can. I will literally work a 10-hour day filming a video at Universal, and then I'll say, all right, Emma, I'll see you later. Walk back into Universal Studios and go through two or three Halloween Horror Nights haunted houses. I love Halloween Horror Nights. Universal does an absolutely amazing Christmas event, Universal Holiday. They also do an amazing Mardi Gras event that lasts for several months at the beginning of the year. And this Mardi Gras festival, I would liken it to an Epcot festival. Tons of food from carnival celebrations around the world, um, amazing eats, amazing entertainment, a whole parade with Macy's floats. It's so, so cool. And the best part about the things like Mardi Gras and Universal Holiday are that these events are included with your park admission. Something that, though you'll see decorations, maybe some specialty entertainment, definitely some specialty eats at Disney, you don't really get their full holiday experience unless you pay for those after hours parties. The only after hours paid event at Universal for a seasonal event is Halloween Horror Nights, which isn't for everybody. I have gotten many fights about this, mostly with Emma, because she does believe Disney's seasonal events are a little better, but I hands down would rather experience every Universal seasonal event of the year instead of Disney's. Another very cool thing about those Universal seasonal events is that Universal has the Tribute Store to go along with it. The Tribute Store is a highly themed store that opens seasonally at Universal, and the theme changes. So it was just the Mardi Gras theme, because Mardi Gras just recently ended, and they've been teasing online that this summer it's gonna be a 90s throwback theme of some kind, and then it'll probably go to Halloween Horror Nights and then back to the holidays. But I love exploring the tribute stores. Even though I hardly ever buy the merchandise in there, you absolutely have to go in because they're so themed to like attractions on their own. A lot of people think there's not that much to do at City Walk because it isn't that big, but there's a ton to do at City Walk. Now, some attractions exist, some shopping, some dining. Gonna be smaller than Disney Springs, yes, but still very cool. City Walk is also gonna have Disney Springs Beat and Disney World in general be on nightlife. 
There are tons of lounges, late night bars. There's a place where you can become a superstar with karaoke. There's Universal's great movie Escape, which is an escape room experience that is so much fun. Emma and I got to experience this around the time that it opened. Uh, we did both rooms and they were a blast. Such unique escape rooms. And in there they have a bar with drinks themed to Jurassic World and Back to the Future. How cool is that? And they've got a Voodoo Donuts and a Cowfish. So there are a couple of rarer restaurants that you can visit at City Walk that you can only visit maybe one other place. Cowfish has a couple other locations in the southeast. Voodoo Donuts, last I checked, only had a location in Oregon. So some amazing famous spots that you can grab here at City Walk. Um, and they also have a Whopper Bar, Burger King. So you could go there too. I've never been there. <laughs> Basically, Universal has a ton to offer, a ton. You don't want to miss out on any of it. Hopefully this video helps you to know what you can see and do when you're at Universal Orlando. If you liked it, go ahead and like, subscribe, and now go check out our 20 must-dos of Universal Studios. I'll see you there.